All right, everyone. I just wanted to show you guys this. Um, sorry about this. Let me just move this out the way. I just wanted to show you guys this article I found. Well, I didn't find. My uncle found it and he uh, sent it to me. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can find this, but I thought I would just go through it, read it, um, kind of give you give my own two cents about kind of how it's just, yeah, let's go dive in. <laughs> Portrait. Masahiro Kikuno, Japanese independent watchmaker. A Japanese approach to watchmaking executed by hand. Microscope. What looks to be maybe a machining machine. Despite being just 33 years old, Masahiro Kikuno makes wristwatches by hand in a rigorous, rigorous, rigor, rigorously traditional manner, inspired by the craftsmen who built Wadoke, or traditional Japanese clocks in the 19th century. Um, if you guys want to have a little bit more information about Wadoke, check out the Seiko video I made back in the day. I, t I touched briefly about on what okay clocks and um, how they were uh, there were astrological clocks in uh, Japan once it, during this time period. Based in the small city of Matsudo, an hour's drive from Tokyo and Chiba Prefecture, Kikuno crafts his timepieces inside his home, working in a converted bedroom, while the garage is the machine shop and the spare toilet a metal treatment facility. Shared with his wife, Kikuno's house is compact, clean, and comfortable like many Japanese homes. <laughs> Classic watchmaking, uh, not even watchmaking, like clamps, brushes, just what looks to be glue guns, just, just to, I mean, any modern, you know, tinker. This looks very familiar. Usually, yeah, watch guys put their, uh, their items on there and start messing with it, but I don't know, it looks a little bit different. Pretty sick setup. Uh, notebook, calculator, little you know plants and such. The up this is all the upstairs bedroom. And then, despite its modest size, Kiku Kikuno's workshop is almost entirely vertically integrated. Kikuno has equipment for turning wheels, bluing and tempering steel, and even a roller for making flattened flatten for making flattening steel bars to make. Mokume Gane, literally translating as wood grain metal dials. Kikuno now wearing the now discontinued Makume uh, wristwatch. So it seems to me that it's a wood grain, what is what they say? Wood grain metal dial. That's kind of interesting. He makes nearly the entire watch himself, even the case, an unusual accomplishment for a one man operation. In fact, Kakuno's dedication to crafting components is so uncompromising, he even produces his own mokumegane, hammering, rolling, and heating copper, gold, and silver to produce a wood grain alloy. The hairspring, mainspring, jewels, crystal, and the strap are bought from suppliers, primarily Seiko subsidiaries. Um, by the way, this is, honestly, this is not a big deal. Seiko, or not Seiko, Rolex buys their hairsprings from Seikos, and if you're a one-man operation, these are things that are just kind of out of your reach, you know. I I mean, maybe, I don't want to say that, because maybe, he, who knows, 10 years from now, he'll be making all this stuff himself. But, yeah, a lot of the stuff, Rolex doesn't even make um, in-house. So, keep that in mind. His workshop. Usually, it looks, usually, I've seen, like, watch movements put in there. A lot of just cool stuff, you know. Oh, looks to be, uh movements or unfinished movements here just interesting here it says the educated watchmakers workshop will inevitably have a well-stocked library so let's see what he's got there japanese clocks clocks some books and kanji that i can't read let's see what these are time science chronos Old clock and watches and their makers. So this guy's uh, really getting into the uh, like actual watchmaking literature. Traité de construction horologie. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to check out some of these books. I'm gonna 
don't worry what about this. I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this. So I can, uh, this is on Japanese, but this one I wanna be able to remember. And the time science one looks cool too. Maybe I can find an English translation for these. The converted garage. Like the houses, garages, <clears throat> like the houses, garages in Japan are fairly compact, built to accommodate practically sized cars. Yet Kakuno has managed to equip it with everything necessary. Much of the heavy lifting, fabricating main plates and bridges, polishing, metalworking is done in the garage. So he's got a lathe here. He's got, that's the lathe, um, some other stuff. This, I, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what that is. Oh, here it is. It's a roller for flattening Mokumegane bars. Wow. I've, I've, I've actually seen this before. Uh, funny enough, I was walking around um, uh, north of Seattle in a suburb called uh, Linwood, and literally there was a machine like this, just right, someone put their mailbox on one. I don't know if it's a one for one, but something very looked very similar to this. This is a polishing machine. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. You know, my family was is a in my family's home. We have a lot of carpent uh, carpenter, you know, woodworking uh, supplies. So looking at these is kind of interesting because I've never seen any of this stuff before. Besides this, maybe, but you know, metalworking uh, tools are very very different than um, what I'm used to. This machine shop also includes an old school milling machine. It's operated manually. Kuno traces the hand-drawn plan for the base plate with a stylus, while the cutter simultaneously mills out the part. Now, my Nina was telling me about this. So we'll see if we can find a better picture. So what's what's going on here is he's uh, tracing over like his design or whatever. And um, at the same time, like this fat drawing is being translated very small. As you can see, he's tracing everything. It's being translated onto the watch movement. Uh, this is, I believe, you know, that base plate that they start putting all the different parts in. That's what he's kind of cutting out right now. Uh, but basically, it starts out big, and he just draws what he's doing, and he just hand, you know, follows it, and it gets translated on that small little uh, movement. And damn, that's a beautiful picture. I think I'm I'm gonna make that the thumbnail. <laughs> Cool. Let's do it again so I can get it better. Get the SJX in there. This, I'm uh, I'm gonna subscribe to these guys' um, website because I've never found them before. But this kind of article is is extremely, you know, I think it's so valuable just to just appreciate this man's work. That's pretty cool. So what's I wonder what's going on in there? Or is that the same machine? Ah, I think it's the same machine. He's just taking a close look. Kuno also has done his own quality control to ensure all the parts he produces are up to spec. He does this with an optical comparator, a small device that projects a magnified image of a part against an overlay chart. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, that must be it. The genesis of an idea. Kakuno's path to watchmaking was an, an unusual one. Having been a small arms technician in the Japanese self-defense forces uh, uh, for four years starting at the age 18, it was with the military that Kikudo, Kikuno found his calling when he met a senior officer who was, who was a watch enthusiast. Um, I can't remember where I was looking this up, but I was getting into um, small arms technicians for the United States military, I was looking at the Japanese defense forces also. And these guys, I kid you not, are basically like, I what were they doing? They're just, let's say your AR-15 like jams or something, or you know, uh, your gun gets blown up in an IED, or um, there's like men, mal, like things going wrong with your gun. These are the guys who fix, you know, weapons. So I mean, they're basically. I mean, thinking about it, it's not that different than a watch, you know, it's just another mechanical thing that serves a function, a firearm. I can definitely see how that same passion could get translated towards wristwatches. But yeah, these guys though, the the small arms technicians, they, they start to get really, really advanced. Um, I'm not for sure if it's the US military or other, other militaries, but they can really climb the ranks and become like, 
you know, masters of military arms. Kokuno then left the JSDF, that's the Japanese Self-Defense Forces, enrolling in a four-year course at the, at the Hiko Mizuno College of Jewelry in Shibuya, a Tokyo district better known for, the, for its fashion stores. It was there that he produced his first timepiece, a time-only wristwatch with a retrograde display. Uh, what is a retrograde display? Is that an LCD screen? Oh, definitely not an LCD screen, God. So a retrograde display. Looks to me that it's... So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And then over here, it looks to be the, the month, maybe. And then this is the minutes. So this is the minutes. This is the hour. This is the day. And then what is the VI, what is the timing in here for? Maybe seconds, but there's no seconds hand. Let's check these other ones out. It looks, I think retrograde display, I'm not exactly for sure what it is, but um, I'll definitely take a look into this, but it seems to me that it's, what's the common feature in all of these is that besides the seconds hands or whatever, there's, um, for example, the date or whatever. This right here is the date. This on this other side is something else. It uh, has a, another second hand um, kind of directing it. So it's a fairly complicated mechanical complication. It's pretty cool. I think, is that it? Oh, this is his first watch, yeah. I don't want to sound like a, like a dick, but it's pretty crude. But at the same time, it's it's really impressive. He's got the loom. This must be the retrograde display. I mean, I don't, I can't tell time on it, but <laughs> I think it's still pretty dope. The college, however, taught watch repair rather than watch making leading Kakuna to embark on a journey of self-education. Like many other self-taught independent watchmakers, Kakuna studied the craft primarily via George Daniel's seminal watchmaking, which instructs the reader on how to produce a tourbillon. That led K Kakuna to build his first tourbillon wristwatch in 2010. Hmm, a book that teaches you how to make your own tourbillon. There it is. I've actually seen this before. I've act I was gonna buy this book um, the other day, but I ended up buying the Watch Movement instead. But uh, yeah, I was gonna buy this book. I was just gonna. I was on. Um, I think you can just buy this on Amazon, maybe eBay. But um, these. This is pretty expensive, so just keep that in mind. It's not like a, a ten dollar book that you're gonna be able to get. This is gonna bring you probably at least fifty bucks. But I mean, let's let's see. George. Daniel watchmaking. Yeah, about 50, 60, about 85 bucks. You can get it in Amazon. Yeah, it's in stock. So it's no joke, right? But uh yeah, if you can you can get the book right here. You could just go to Amazon, type it in, or you can wait for me to buy it and flip through it and click the link so I can make like three bucks when you buy it <laughs> anyways <laughs> for a spell after graduation Kakuno continued as an instructor at the college interesting uh, but in 2012 set up a shop on his own as an independent watchmaker a year later he became a member of the HC AHCI being one of two Japanese members of the so association the other being Hajime Asaoka Sorry about that noise. Something is just falling underneath me. I'm trying to like save it. But let's see who this guy is. Oh, see, they have another article on him. Dope. So the AHCI. The advanced. Okay, this is, that's not, um, that's not the AHCI we're looking for. The AHCI. Oh, here it is. 
has 36 members. It's the Academy Horologe des Creatures Independents. Independents. Just that ch. So I don't know what that is. Wonder why it's taking a while. I don't know. Hajime Asaoka. <laughs> wow. Just. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure that none of this is photoshopped at all, but can just pay attention to the, just the cleanliness of this, these, these like cuts and lines and look at that, just the curve there. Just everything about this watch is so clean. A little bit of imperfection there, I don't know. Wow. That is just so clean. Look at those hands. Damn, son. This guy's on another level. This is a pretty dope, um. Um, a website <laughs> definitely check it out watches by SJX see if Academy the Autology yep so the Academy Hello Dream blah blah is an association with the mission to perpetuate the art of it independent watch and clock making so it's uh let's see if we can find um just a bunch of older white guys where's uh, our friend um Masahiro, Masahiro. Oh, this is the circle of, of friends, but let's check out the members. We'll go back to it, if it when it loads. More pics of his uh, workstation. Beautiful. Here we go. He seems to be I don't know what he's making, man. I have no clue what he's making. Maybe watch hands? Five years on, Kakuno was still in the process of developing a house style, exploring the diverse aesthetics of watches he has made. The fact that he makes nearly everything himself also means limitations in certain areas, like the shape of the watch case, for instance. Ooh, these are pretty dope, actually. That's a pretty cool square. Wristwatch, rectangle. Damn, man, look at that dial. That's that wood grain dial that they were talking about. I can, so it's a mix of copper, gold, and silver. And look at the way that case is designed. It's pretty interesting. A lot of inlays and dents. Looks like it has a little bit of a, a curved um, crystal. This one's pretty interesting. This looks like uh, some... Roger Debuy stuff, I think, but it's just, look at that the gloss in that case and the kind of 70s futuristic, you know, hover car kind of style. And there's that wood grain again. <laughs> Don't know what that is. <laughs> that, I'm not a fan of that, but then again, to each his own. Uncompromisingly traditional. Well, actually, let's go back to the AHCI members. So, here's Asaoka Hajime. Where is our friend? The wonderful, the one and only Kikuno Masahiro. Definitely looks like to be one of the one younger guys here. But yeah, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll take a look into this one day. Kind of just check out what's going on over there. Check out their work. Kikuno has built only a handful of watches in the seven years since he started. Wow. Averaging one watch a year. That's a consequence of his uncompromising adherence to traditional techniques of production. In fact, he briefly attempted to produce timepieces without electricity, neither for lighting nor equipment, because it was how it was done in the 19th century. He somewhat sheepishly admits that the effort was abandoned quickly due to sheer impracticality. <laughs> so what is this? Is this, is this his forge? It looks like a forge. I believe it's a forge. Uh, I've seen, um, what are they called? Ovens like this for uh, prepper videos. They used to, they, they, made, they were showing how to make brick uh, stoves and look, they looked very similar to that. And that also makes sense considering all these blow torches next to it. He's, I mean, he's probably not smoking dabs. <laughs> mm, what's this? I don't know. Tools to blue and temper steel parts, okay. 
maybe he puts maybe you put the um the watch hands in there and you i don't even know i'm not even gonna pretend like i know consequently it is fitting that his signature timepiece is the wado k wristwatch what the first time a traditional japanese watchmaker has been produced been able to produce the watch in form that's what that was that thing i thought was kind of ugly it's a wado k pocket watch oh my god that's insane that's insane that's insane the wadoke keeps seasonal time meaning days are longer in summer and shorter in winter the system of telling time that was replaced by conventional 24-hour days when japan modernized after the meiji restoration once again if you guys want to learn more about that check out the history of seiko video Kino Kuno's wide okay wristwatch is essentially a miniaturized version of the original clock, but it tells both the traditional and modern time. Guys, this is this is on a whole nother level. I mean, this is <sighs> I words don't describe how amazing that is. <sighs> wow, oh my god. That's insane. F that. This is gonna be the freaking thumbnail. <laughs> This is another Wado K. This is the Wado K wristwatch. Wow, look at that elaborately made flout. Was that floral pattern? Art in that. I don't know. Is that Art Deco style? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Look at those nice. They're almost purpled. Purpled hands. <laughs> Not only are the production of methods similar, Kakuno also points out that his approach to producing the Wado K is historically correct. The clocks were typically produced by a single craftsman rather than a series of contractors as it was in Switzerland during the same period. I just want to highlight uh, just by looking at these pictures of, of the even the insides of these watches not even the insides but the back plating of these watches like the machining is done it really 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 well the polishing is done superbly well everything on this case is just exceptional same thing goes for this movement too just the the, the machining is done i mean really it's an a plus plus Kuna's watch is started approximately at 5 million yen, 5 million yen, about $45,000 for the Sakubo wristwatch that features a moon phase and a hand cut out Kuro Shibuchi, Shibuichi dial made of copper, gold, and silver alloy. The dial takes to Kakuno's two days to complete, first having to cut the floral motif by hand, then a tiny saw to create the matte black finish. Huh. I've seen, that's like a, seen those to cut uh, pipes before. Maybe not that, maybe, I don't know. Look at that though, it, he, he's just cutting right in through that 2x4, whatever kind of wood that is. Just look at him, just focused. The Sakabu, Sakubo is powered by an in-house movement naturally, one designed and built from, the, from scratch by Kukuno. The moon phase display at 6 o'clock is accurate to a day in 122 years, the standard in modern, modern watchmaking. While Sakubo is Kakuno's latest creation, having been, just been unveiled at Basel World 2017. His most distinctive wristwatch, however, is undoubtedly the Wado K wristwatch. I agree, that is, that's really impressive. This starts at 18 million yen, about $160,000 for the basic version, and rising to $225,000 for the fully engraved model. Uh, 
I just want to once again highlight how impressive it is that they made a Wado K wristwatch. Um, it's that's it's kind of unfathomable, almost. This turbion, on the other hand, costs about ninety thousand dollars, indicating how much more complex the Wado K is. Yeah, I mean, it, it is amazingly complicated. Kuno also has a handful of prototypes sitting around the workshop, movements he works on when he has the time. Amongst the works in progress is an intriguing pocket-sized watch, pocket watch-sized double balance wheel prototype that is similar to the FP Jorn uh, Renaissance Reson Resonance. He does not know if it will ever be turned into a commercially available timepiece. Well, you better cover that. <laughs> Masahiro's Kikuno's watches are available direct from the watchmaker, can be reached via his website. Let's go check it out. So this is all in Japanese. Do you have an English translation, my friend? But if you're on a Google, um, whatever they're called, you can do it, but. Let's see, let's check out his watches. Ah, keep this clicking. Ooh, look at the uh, purple uh, hands on those. That's pretty crazy. Very elaborate. What is this face plate? <laughs> the second hand's pretty dope, and uh, I believe that's a moon face. That's a really pretty way to do it. The sakubo is a bit most uh, basic. This is that um. You know what I'm talking about, the Waddle K wristwatch. This is, you know, when I first said that this is ugly, I kind of agreed, because I thought it was a normal wristwatch. I was like, why did it have to be in that kind of square looking rectangular case? But knowing that's a Waddle K in there, and this, and a wristwatch is just insane. And I, as you can see here, um, it starts to get more clumped over here. This is winter. This is winter, I believe, and then this is June, this is summer. So, <clears throat> I don't know exactly what month, but it, it goes by how long the days are, the daylight is. So the longer the daylight, obviously, that means summer and then the shorter, that's winter. So it's not a easy one-to-one -one translation. Um, it's uh, That's what makes it kind of complex is because, I mean, it's just, it's so unconventional than a normal 24 hour time. And the fact that it has both, insane. <laughs> this is something that, I mean, this is just art. The wood grain, the sub seconds hands, pretty clean blued hands. This is not my style, <clears throat> just because I prefer more traditional kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, hey, this is that really, really. Si oh, it's a turb. I mean, duh, it's a turbion. But I mean, look at the uh, the case. That's what I find it most impressive about this wristwatch. Kind of similar to uh, the designs by what are they called? What are they called? They're they're German. I got the Elangenson. Elangenson does uh, designs similar to this. I don't want to say it one for one, but they kind of do the off-centered. Throw it in kind of like an whatever the opposite of symmetri symmet symmetrical, asymmetrical maybe kind of design. The temporal hour watch. This is another Wado K. You can just tell once again from the. Now this is this is kind of this is clean, man. This is this is something that I would definitely pick up if I had a hundred, hundred grand lying around. Look at that. This is just absolutely beautiful. Oh my god, look at the just the angles and You know what I'm not even gonna say anymore, but he's only produced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wristwatches. I mean, does anyone find that kind of insane? Can you imagine spending like the past six or seven years of your life just working on like eight main projects? That's pretty crazy and admirable. 
for me, you know, I pump videos out pretty crazy. So, I mean, if I guess the YouTube channel would be considered one project, but within it is, you know, 100 individual projects that only take me a, maybe a day to make. But these, man, a year working to complete this, this, uh, this object. Man, just the people who, who are really, really willing to create... I mean, those are the, these guys are the world changers right here. Like, this guy right here is moving worlds. I have never in my life seen a, a Waddle K this small. All the ones I've seen, big, big ass things. Like, they look like grandfather clocks. So to be able to simplify that and put that in a wristwatch, that's impressive. And it shows a lot of uh, Japanese pride because... Seiko's not gonna do it, Citizen's not gonna do it, you know, s s you think a Swiss brand is gonna make a Waddle K wristwatch? No, you know, it, it, it had to be, you know, it had to be a personal project, and I'm, I'm really happy that he made that, that's highly impressive. So guys, we're gonna end it here. I learned a lot, I'm really happy that I discovered this, and I'm gonna go down a new path of learning about uh, certain things, and Mostly, I want to show you guys this world of watchmaking, the independent watchmakers. I'm really, I will leave a link in the description to uh, the, the this article. Um, definitely, um, I, I will. <sighs> I'm just kind of overwhelmed of just how like beautiful these crafts are. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for listening to Akuma Studies and Akuma out.